live show in like four days, fellas. We Love are, it. We are cooking. Shout out to Bob Davis. Uh, <laughs> we're at the Kingdom Bar and Grill here in Overland Park. Shout out to them. Great food. Great. Just an incredible setup to watch something like the selection show or an NCAA tournament game. So shout out to them. But, boys, they're showing the final region right now, the East, which we've learned is going to be Baylor with Kentucky as a two seed. Yep. The big development we just had was we've been debating all day. Are we getting Kentucky or are we getting Auburn? And as you probably saw, we tweeted a video of our reaction. We got Auburn, and we're pretty pumped about it. A.B., B. Turn, whoever wants to chime in. Why? I mean, A.B., you go. You're fired up. Why do you love our region so much? It's just perfect. It's every team that we didn't want to play. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't want Kentucky. We didn't want Illinois. We didn't – and we just – I mean, Providence stinks – yeah, well, out loud. Auburn, I think, was all of our choice for a two seed, and that's who we get. And then I can't even think of our three seed right now. Wisconsin. But, oh my God. Yeah, I know. I said a few weeks ago on the pod, Wisconsin and Chicago might be tough, but no, this is best case scenario, as I tweeted out. And I don't want to guarantee a Final <laughs> Four, but if we we're if we were gonna <laughs> ask for a region to look how it does, this would be the one that I would uh, I would have drawn up in my dreams last night. Yeah, and like Auburn's not a bad team, obviously, but I think us three would agree that that's the two we wanted. And then when Nova was – we, I think a lot of bracketologists had um, Villanova as a three going into this. And when they were a two, we were kind of – we knew it would be Auburn or Kentucky. And obviously Kentucky gave it to us earlier this year at Allen. So yeah. obviously don't want to see them again. But, I mean, Iowa's tough. Keegan Murray's probably going to be a first-team All-American. We'd play them in Chicago second weekend. So that would be a tough matchup just looking forward. But – I know we didn't want San Diego State, which yeah. they have – they're easily one of the best defenses in the country. They're, Ken Palm has them as the second-best defense in the country. So, yeah, that would be a tough matchup. Um, but other than that, I think – I mean, like I, I just tweeted, I think it's best-case scenario region. It, like, I'm not guaranteeing anything. Marks is unpredictable. But I can't ask for a better region than what we were just handed. It is pretty good. I mean, pretty obviously good. San Diego State's scary. But, boys, we're a one seed. Like, if you're freaking out over your 8-9 game – you're not going very far in March because games are going to be tough. you got to win tough games. Iowa, they're going to be the trendy Final Four pick out of that region. Everyone's going to have Iowa going. Yeah, they're and hot. When they're Seth out. Davis here after the show slings Iowa to the Final Four, I'm going to feel so good because that's a guy that uh, he sharpied pen over Kansas the year we went to the Final Four in 2018. So, wow, Murray, Murray State just announced in the East. That's going to be Kentucky, Murray San State. San Francisco, second. that first-round game is intriguing to me. I know you're a San Francisco San Fran's pretty Dawn good too. Hater, but Murray State, Kentucky, second round in Indianapolis is going to be a fun game. So, But, yeah, I think you guys, you, you summed it up. We we didn't want Illinois. Kofi's a nightmare for Dave. Yeah. Uh, we didn't want <clears throat> Shibwe. We've seen that play out in front of our eyes. We didn't want that. Uh, Wisconsin, I mean, the thing is, we're celebrating Auburn. I don't know if Auburn's – like, if assuming we beat San Diego State or who, who was our nine? I'm like, oh, Creighton. Not too worried about Creighton. Assuming we can get through the second weekend, let's just freaking hope we can. I <laughs> Ain't mean, no seats curse. Iowa, mm -hmm. Iowa will be scary, but Providence was another team we listed. Like, we want them because that team – 45th in Ken Palm, I just checked. 45th in Ken Palm, so that's a good four seed to have. And then, I mean, you get to that Elite Eight, and A.B. was joking – you said we're going to play Colgate in the Elite Eight. And that that bottom of the bracket, 2-3, seven seed USC, it's like who – I can see anybody making it to the Elite Eight out of there because nobody there is – Wisconsin playing their worst basketball of the year. Auburn's playing their worst yeah. basketball of the year. Pretty yeah, good Wisconsin situation. just lost to Nebraska, didn't they? Nebraska, Nebraska won Nebraska. like a – they only won a couple Big 12 games this year. But, yeah, USC, they have, a, they have a lot of guys back from last year. I know they lost Mobley, but – they have experience and things like that. So hi, Jan. I love you. I could, <laughs> I could easily see them. I could see USC making the second weekend randomly. Like yeah. Auburn, Auburn's great. Like Jabari Smith going to be a top five pick. Walker Kessler from UNC, and they got guards that are kind of inconsistent, but they can go at sometimes. And I, like they've, they've been weird lately. Like they're so inconsistent. They've lost. I think they almost lost to Georgia and yeah. things like that. So they've, they've lost a ton of games lately, I feel like, or they've at least been in tight games late. So I feel like you never know with Auburn. That's why we're excited about them being our two. Yeah. I mean, their guard play has been pretty bad. I mean, those guys, I think I saw Katie Johnson went 0 of 14 <clears throat> from the field in their loss in the tournament. It's like those guys, they have two really good players on their team and Kessler and Jabari Smith. The problem is the guards think they're the two best players on the floor. So 
Kessler's he's he's a bad matchup for Dave too though. I mean that that guy might win defense player of the year. He's an incredible def- defender at the five, but I don't know. I always like to see teams that are kind of limping into the tournament that have just kind of felt like Auburn peaked a few weeks ago. Um, Who did Wisconsin lose to in the Big Ten tournament? Uh, was it Iowa? Or am I wrong on that? I don't know. Wasn't it was a pretty gross, ugly game? Michigan but, State. Oh yeah, it was Michigan State. And January, I mean, Michigan February, State. Is, uh, yeah. January. Well, there we go. Oklahoma barely missed. Holy shit. A and M was that uh, far out. I thought A and M might sneak in going to the title game. Wow. <clears throat> Damn. Well, yeah, so Izzo – so there's a little storyline. I tweeted, Izzo is going to end Coach K's career. How do we feel about – I mean, you want to shift over, talk some other brackets. I thought Gonzaga has a I, – I tweeted, I think they'll sleepwalk to the Final Four. How you guys feel about the uh, West? Duke being their two seed, uh, Michigan State the seven, Texas Tech the three. I kind of like the draw for Texas Tech to get to an Elite Eight, but I don't know how you guys feeling about that. I think it's so funny that the NCAA told Coach K to just F off. <laughs> He's like, I want Chicago. I want to go back to where I grew up because I'm an asshole and I get everything I want. <laughs> and they sent him out to the West, where was it? San Francisco? Is that oh, where yeah. the lead? It? Yeah, no. Yeah, that, no. That you're... guy stinks. <clears throat> I'm not even gonna make it there. They're they're frauds. I'm currently sitting with the two biggest Coach K haters in the country, and it's like if if Duke doesn't make the second weekend in Coach K's last season coaching. I would love to see your guys' reaction, and what are the odds Coach K would come back Dude, and coach again? Me and AB were just to. talking about that. Like, <laughs> he he's to. he's going to make John, I'm sorry. I can't go out like this. I'm coming back, and John Shire is going to have to end up going and coaching at, like, Missouri or something. Like, Coach K is never going to give up this job if he doesn't at least have some sort of memorable uh, outcome here in the tournament. I mean, I still get a little worried. Duke – Duke is so talented, dude. When they play at their A game, they're really good, and they've obviously beat Gonzaga already. So, if, I mean, you got to think if Duke gets hot, beats Michigan State, beats Texas Tech, gets to that Elite Eight game, you see a rematch with Gonzaga. I don't know, because at that point, Duke will have won. Will have won what three straight to get there, and now you're kind of like maybe they're maybe they're grooving a little bit. So it's an interesting region. I uh, I thought Duke would I. I'll be honest, we make fun of Duke. I didn't want them in our region because of just, like, that big of a game. Now, all of a sudden, those superstars, Paulo. Uh, A.J. Griffin's like a top 10 pick. A.J. Griffin, Wendell Moore's Mark been there a while. Like, yeah, they're stacked. So if they get hot and they start peaking, like, Gonzaga-Duke rematch would be so much fun to watch. Yeah, so. Hard to disagree. I'd much rather see them lose in the first round. Oh, well, I mean. <laughs> Who do they even play first round? Because that's that might be chalk for me. <laughs> I don't know. Show but it, me that piece. It would be so fun. I don't think Duke's not, obviously not going to lose a 15 seed, which I guess they have in the last decade. But uh, Michigan State, I mean. Who do we, they play again? Their 10th seed State, is Davidson. Davidson. Yeah. So a lot of be people, I tweeted Izzo was going to end his career, and a lot of people were like, Davidson's beating Michigan State, which very well could happen. But, like, that was done for a reason. Duke, Michigan State have played some classic games. That Michigan State team beat Zion, R.J. Barrett, in the Elite Eight. Like, it feels like Izzo kind of has K's number at times. I'm probably wrong on that. But it feels like as of late, uh, Izzo's kind of had his number. And that would just be he so funny. Beat him in the Elite Eight, right? Yeah. Yeah, beat him with Zion and them. So, <clears throat> yeah, that, that shows that the talent isn't always there for Duke. Like, they had way more talent than that Michigan State team, yeah. and they just won. But Michigan State hadn't been good, and I don't want to talk too much. And it's Izzo's month since he wins national titles all the time. Every yeah. year, babe. Uh, it's only every been year. 22 years. but we want to talk a little more about Wes. One team we did not want, Memphis. They've been hot. <clears throat> yeah. They get rid of – it's weird to say this, but they got rid of the number one overall high school recruit or number two, Imani Bates, and now they've been rolling. Uh, they're the ninth seed with Gonzaga. And if I'm Gonzaga, I'm a little worried about that. Memphis is athletic. Mm-hmm. They're, they've got guys that have been there a while. Penny's has gotten good talent in there. Um, and they're, they're playing really good basketball right now. So, honestly, if I'm Gonzaga, they got Memphis, they got UConn, they got Arkansas. But, I mean, do we really – is anyone – Watch for Memphis, man. <clears throat> That's Watch what I told Memphis. AB before this. Like, any region Gonzaga was going to be in, I would feel pretty damn good about them making the Final Four anyways. Yeah. They're I just mean, so good. They I are mean, good. They're just, they're just good. I mean, so. I don't know. I told you guys this about Memphis, though. Since Amani left, these, Memphis has been the second best team in the country on Torvik. Yeah. Which is, like, crazy to think about because they've been a bubble team this whole time. But that's yeah. a tough little matchup with all that talent. So. I would right. completely say it was not going to happen. Let's go south, which I thought 
I thought it was a tough region for Arizona. They've got they've got that Kerr Carise. He's hurt for them, struggling with a sprained ankle. They got Houston as a five seed, who I'm low on Houston, but <laughs> analytics, Ken Palm, they love Houston. Literally a top five team, according to Ken Palm. I think he's I think that's their, his fifth ranked team, Houston. Yeah, which is crazy second, for a five ahead, ahead of us. So yeah, <clears throat> that's scary for Arizona. Illinois was a team we already mentioned. We didn't want them. That's going to be a fun matchup. A little um, rematch of that. Uh, <clears throat> What was that an elite eight game? Yeah, Arizona, Illinois. You said um, you said Iowa would be a trendy pick. I feel like Illinois is going to be a trendy pick again this yeah, year. For sure. um, they got a bunch of seniors. They got Alfonso Plummer from Utah. Um, Kofi's obviously a beast. Carbello, Trent Frazier, like they got a bunch of upperclassmen and Brad Underwood, next K State coach, is obviously. <laughs> yeah, Underwood's mind is in Manhattan, mm-hmm. folks. He, he's not. They're out in the first round. Uh, Nova sneaks up to a two line. And Did that shock you guys a ton? Not I just, really. I think they have a pretty dang good resume. I don't know. Go ahead. AD. I kind of just assumed they'd be out east to like as a three. Which, I mean, we all kind of said for months. Like, And that was a big fear we had. Another two. When you talk about this from a KU perspective, the big storylines where you don't want Nova and Philly, you don't want Kentucky, you don't want Illinois, you don't, like all those teams we've already talked about. But Nova, it just seemed like that was getting set up for Nova to go to Philly. Um, so that's good for – I mean, Arizona's not having to play a road game against Nova, but Nova's playing good basketball right now. They just won the Big East tournament. Yeah. Nova. They, no, I can see them coming out of that region, which I yeah, hate to say. I could too. I also think second round matchup against Loyola, both pretty defensive minded teams. Like that could be the nastiest, ugliest game of all time. Oh. I could see Loyola win it. Like Ohio State's really solid too. Um, so I think Nova's going to have a tough second round matchup no matter what. Nova's gross to watch, but they, they grind <laughs> they it out. They always do it. Yeah. Uh, let's see anything else about that region that stands out. TCU, Arizona could be a second round matchup. We know just as good as anyone TCU when they play well can look good when they, when they don't play well, they can be really bad. I, if I'm Arizona, I'm not too worried about that. Arizona or, um, Illinois, Houston would be a hell of a game. I want to see that. I just, I kind of think the analytics are a little way too high on Houston though. I'm glad you're but coming like, around. I've been well, trying to tell you that they, they don't have a quad one win. Yeah. Like, how are you a top? I don't know. Like, Keep in I, mind, they made a Final Four run last year without playing, like, a single top 25. What was it? It was something absurd. I think it was they, 15, 10, 11, 12 yeah. to get to the Final And then, four. like, their whole regular season, they didn't really play anyone good either. So, they're, like, one of the only times ever to just roll to a Final Four without truly getting a top 10 test. Ken Palm has them 10th ranked offense, 11th ranked defense, fifth team That's in the country. crazy to me. And I know Marcus Sasser is probably their best player. I didn't even. I guess I don't pay attention to college basketball enough, and I do a college basketball pod. But Marcus Sasser, one of the, he's probably their best player. He had surgery in December, so I don't know if he's coming back or what. But yeah, I think Illinois beats Houston in the second round, and I want to see Illinois Arizona. I'd I think that'll be a very fun game. You just get that vibe of like 2005, where uh, Arizona blew that huge lead, uh, let Darren Williams that Illinois team make a comeback. Um, Tennessee. That's, I mean, Arizona's got a tough bracket. Mm-hmm. Tennessee's playing really good. They just won the SEC tournament. Nova's playing really good, won the Big East tournament. Arizona, one of their best players is hurt. I don't know. If you guys are, uh, if you're an Arizona fan, when you're comparing kind of one seed's route to the Final Four, where do you stand? You like our situation more than Zona, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. it, it's like every team we said we didn't want to play, it feels like Arizona might have <laughs> yeah. to play. So, yeah. I mean, outside of Kentucky, I guess. But yeah, no, they're. And we watched that live. We kind of pointed that out right away, that it was crazy loaded without knowing what ours would look like. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I would want no part of that region. Yeah, I think it's loaded. It's full of really good defenses, too. Like, you got Loyola, Nova, Illinois, Houston, TCU. Like, TCU could be a tough matchup for anyone right now. They're just super tough, super active on the glass and things like that. But even Arizona's really good defensively. <laughs> I think I would honestly have Illinois in the Final Four out of that out of that region, which might sound crazy because there's a lot of good teams. But I don't think it's crazy. And if Arizona doesn't stay healthy, then that's obviously very possible. Um, all right, let's get to our bracket. I know we kind of we hopped in and we got all excited about everything, but let's really look at it. Eight nine games, San Diego State Creighton. We already touched on San Diego State a little bit, but Jesse Newell put out an article today about like here's the teams you really want to avoid, and we avoided all of them, other than. San Diego State, which I think if the one team that scares you the most, I think I already said this, is an eight seed, then you're, you're feeling pretty good about that. Because, what, San Diego State Creighton is going to be a one, two-point game. Like, it's not going to be a big – it's very possible we see Creighton. So I'm not not too hung up on getting San Diego State. 
Uh, I don't know how truly – let's just jump ahead. How truly terrified are we of Iowa in a Sweet 16 game? I, I said this to you guys. <laughs> this feels like the region that just goes bananas to me. Like, I was talking to a friend yesterday, fade Iowa, teams that get hot like this randomly win a conference tournament. And then everyone hypes them and, up. Yeah, they're going to yeah. be trendy, like you guys said, with Illinois even, like – it just team, seems like a team I might want to fade early. And then, obviously, none of us have confidence in Providence. So, yeah. like, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe a Richmond. Who's the 13? South Dakota State? Uh, I think that is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, South Dakota State's going to be favored That feels Providence. like it could be the random yeah. region that has a 12-13 in the second round. And then we just – I mean, it's happened to us before where we get lucky in the, that scenario. But yep. Yeah. I mean, with Iowa, it's like I already said Keegan Murray. He's unbelievable. Like, if you literally – I showed you guys his stats before the game. It's like 25, Great. 20 – every game he's 20-plus. Probably going to be a top-10 pick. Bo Hannon, uh, he's been there for literally 13 years. And then they got the McCaffrey – uh, the McCaffrey brothers. So, it's like they're – Super solid, but I don't know. It feels like if you could just slow down their other – like Keegan Murray's going to get his yeah, 20 exactly. 25. You can slow down the other guys and force Bohannon into tough shots, which I feel like DeWan would just lock him down. <laughs> Here's the terrifying thing about Iowa. When you look at our – we always joke ain't no seats cursed since we've been doing this podcast. We lost by a billion <laughs> to uh, Auburn, and then we lost mm-hmm. by a billion to USC. Biggest tournament just loss teams in history. In – and even Villanova in 2018, like our last three losses have been absolute offensive juggernaut team. I don't even know if USC was. They just played that well. Mm-hmm. The thing that scares me about Iowa is are we going to gear up for one of those fluky games where Iowa just puts up 96 points and yeah. beats us? And the good thing about this KU team is we could hang with them a bit, but – Dude, Same Iowa styles. gets going. Yeah, so I don't know. I guess it goes back to the scenario we threw out on the pod a few weeks ago. Like, do you want this team? If you're in a, a stressful Sweet 16 game, do you want it to be against a grinded out, kind of low scoring, you got to get stops late, kind of like like we saw against Tech the other, last night? Or do you want a offensive shootout where, yeah, we're a top 10 offense, but that's not, that's not where Bill Self's comfortable. But maybe this team's comfortable. I don't know. So – that's what scares me about Iowa is yeah. I think you could very well see yourself in a shootout and then a shootout. It would be. Anything happens. I mean, both really good offenses, okay defenses, and they both play pretty quick. So yeah. it would be – I bet it would be like close to the, both teams scoring 80 or so. Yeah. I just I, – I have that fear of Iowa having one of those Villanova, Auburn, USC type shooting performances. But then, as a law of averages guy <laughs> – we got to be done having teams shoot out of their freaking minds yeah. against us in the tournament. But it's, have you guys watched San Diego State at all? No, no. Like it's just so ugly. Listen, like this is the Mountain West tournament. They won fifty three forty six, and then they lost in the Mountain West Championship fifty three fifty two. So it's just like muddied up games. Where and they're the hundred and sixtieth ranked offense in the country. So it's like as good as their defense is, it's top two in the country or whatever. Ken yeah. Palm has them as number two. It's like. I feel like our offense would prevail that, and they wouldn't be able to score enough points on us. So it's yeah. like as scared as like Jesse Newell is and things like that, which is understandable. They're elite defensively, and we can score, so it could be a good matchup. But it wouldn't scare me a, a ton. If you're scared of a team scoring 53 points back to back nights, and you're a one seed with a top 10 against Fresno, top State. six offense in the country, like come on, that that should not scare us. I'm not going to waste too much time. Guys, can, we, can we pause the podcast really quick? They're doing a Coach K tribute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let's, walk, si- let's, mo- let's all tune into this one. Moment of silence for Coach K, who did not die, but is holding a it's, funeral for himself. It's his last <laughs> dance, baby. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you think his last dance will be better than MJ's? Uh, we talking uh, MJ with the Wizards? Docu- well, I'm talking documentary, <laughs> but that too. Oh, uh, man. Coach K. What a, what a man. I don't, we can't talk more Coach K. We've all already right, done that. Okay. So we, We'll have more to come on him when they lose to – so we'll probably get into predictions near the end of this pod, but let's talk a little bit about – we haven't had a chance to talk about how KU looked in the Big 12 tournament. And Great. I mean, you want to talk about teams peaking at the right time, which is kind of scary because we've been saying, like, wow, peak too early and everyone gets high on you, then you're, you're going to get upset. But, like, man, I have gone – you think about <laughs> TCU a week ago and we did a segment on this pod where we read tweets from fans that – Season was over. Season was over. We were five seed. One guy said we have to no chance we get out of the first weekend. I'm at the point where I'm like, this team's getting to the second weekend. I mean, knock on wood, but this team's getting to the second weekend. Should expect a one seed to do that though. I mean, 
Yeah, exactly. I Which hope. is just we're scarred. We're scarred. But like this team is getting a, so I guess just how are you feeling after the performance this weekend in Kansas City? We obviously look good. Pretty much dominated the entire weekend. Are you yeah. our hopes are all the way up? Aren't yeah, they? <laughs> oh, absolutely. And I've seen a lot of people tweeting about this and it kind of came into my head last night about 2018 where they kind of struggled. There was a little uh, span during big toll play for both teams where they struggled and the fans started freaking out about us. And then we waited on Malik all year. Like Malik, he had a couple of good games in the regular season, and then Big 12 tournament just flipped a switch. And yeah. I know Remy hasn't been – Remy wasn't even close to what Malik did in the Big 12 tournament, but he was great. Like, yeah. he played 26 minutes in the championship. That's I was looking earlier. That was the most minutes he's played since, like, December 15th. He played, like, 27 minutes or something. Yeah. So it's like he wasn't really Malik Newman, but just that spark yeah. plug off the bench. And we've talked for weeks about how we just need – production off the bench and Mitch in the first game he had 10 points second game he had 15 and he was 12 of 15 from the floor in the big 12 tournament and then he got hurt obviously on Saturday I think he'll be good but yeah. having having just a couple spark plugs and a couple guys that can produce off the bench is huge because it's been a question mark all year like we can't trust anyone off the bench all year like Joe he's had great games but he's also been he hasn't been as good in some others and then Remy we've waited all year so it's like I love that those dudes have some confidence going forward coming off the bench for us. Yeah. I mean, it was, I obviously love to see how well Remy played this weekend, but the thing that I loved even more is in a tight game, Bill stuck with him. Like Bill didn't go right back to Dewan. We've, that's been part of what people were frustrated with uh, back when even Texas tech add on field house, we felt like Remy played really good. Then we lost the lead and everyone's like, why'd we go away from Remy? Why'd we go away from Remy? Bill didn't do that the other day. He just rode Remy the rest of the way, and I think that was huge to see Remy close out a Big 12 championship game. I mean, two weeks ago, imagine us saying, like, Remy's going to be on the floor in the final minutes. Dewan's not fouled out. Dewan's not hurt. Remy's just the better player, and Bill's trusting him over Dewan. Like, that – it's just what I love about Kansas basketball is things can change so fast. You mm -hmm. can overreact so quickly. And in a span of two weeks, Remy is now a factor where it's like – He's not going to be Malik, like you said, but we don't need him to be. We've we've kind of compared him to like, and this seems absurd because of what Sharon ultimately ended up. But like, Sharon came off the bench in 08. Now I still don't think Remy can put up Sharon type numbers, but like just to have that when Russell Robinson's kind of you know Russell's the guy. He's the the one. He's the guy that keeps you everything calm. He's he's just the guy that you can always count on not to make mistakes, but when things aren't going well or he's not playing that well, can Remy come in and replace yeah. those minutes like Sharon did? And maybe you see Sharon in the final minutes of a final four game. Like maybe that's Remy one day. I yeah. don't know. And an energy guy too. Like that's kind of what Sharon was and explosive. Like Remy's really good at getting to the rim and we love Dewan. Like we've been team Dewan all year, but it's like there were spans in that big 12 tournament where teams just weren't even worried about him on offense. So yeah. it's like when Remy's in there, he's obviously a threat gets guys open looks, can get to the rim, gets super confident sometimes when he starts making a few shots. So it's it's a guy that can take over down the stretch, and Dewan really can't do that as much as we love him. But yeah. it's exciting. Like, And I, w I wrote this down in my notes before. What would you guys set the odds at of Remy playing more March minutes than Dewan? Oh, that won't happen. I mean. it was well, Big Toll Tournament was close. It was like a 10-minute span. I just – I. <laughs> What? That's the worst Final Four I've ever Seth seen. Seth Davis, breaking news for people not watching live. Seth Davis just picked his Final Four. What was it? Wisconsin, Arizona, Gonzaga, Kentucky. Oh, my God, that's even worse. <laughs> oh, Clark. I mean, here we are. I said this the other day. The yeah, underdog People are going to be picking Iowa, especially because yeah. a lot of people aren't high on us outside of KU fans. Like I mean, a lot of people don't think we're deserving of a one seed. Obviously, our resume is, but the eye test, I guess, people don't think we're good enough. So, well, Clark Kellogg's Final Four, Gonzaga, Arizona, Iowa, Kentucky. I mean – we joked all the time about how the 2018 Kansas team convinced themselves they were underdogs. They were the third overall seed, just like this team. Duke was our two seed. Everyone's like, oh, Duke's going. They had lottery picks. This team, once again, is getting slept on, and I love it because nobody really – this weekend, who played better than Kansas? Maybe Iowa, which is scary, but, like, you're not going to see that consistently from Iowa, I don't think. So I feel pretty good. I like that we're kind of under the radar and – well, it was nice of them to have the number one overall and number two overall seed from the championship game. Ah, I mean, that was good. Of, yeah, it was really creative <laughs> stuff by Sharpie Boy. And 
Uh, are you guys are you guys worried about Ochai right now as like a jump shooter? I was looking at he's like he's 15 for his last 54 from three, which is 28 percent. But and we've talked about this for years now is like we were worried about Ochai just being a jump jump shooter, like strictly a jump shooter. Yeah. And now he's just scoring in a variety of ways, getting to the line, hitting floaters, mid range, finishing at the rim. So it's like kind of worried about him as a jump shooter right now. Like maybe it's a fatigue thing, but I I just, I can't remember who I was talking to this about, but like I kind of didn't want Ochai to have a lights out Big 12, Big 12 tournament I like because that. like he still won Big 12 uh, most outstanding player. He still put up numbers, got to the bucket, got to the line. He was good. Mm-hmm. Nobody was mad at how Ochai played, but he weirdly he was missing shots. He still is. He struggled from three these last few weeks, and I think he got you know he got four days off for the Big 12 tournament. Now he's gonna get what are we? Were we on Thursday? So he'll get four days off here. I think Ochai is gonna get hot in March. Like I just I think I saw someone tweeted Carson Edwards before his absurd March. He went through a big drought. Yeah. I think that's just the regular season. Wild it wears on you. Too. Yeah. I mean, he was close to fifty percent from three at one point. So yeah, and like, he wasn't gonna do that forever. Falling. Yeah. But I do think he can shoot forty five percent from three. So I like Ochai to get going. I'm not worried about Ochai at all. Um I've said it a lot. I think Jalen and I, I the main guy is Dave. You got to have Dave giving you good minutes. You got to have Oach giving you good minutes. But, like, I think for us to make the Final Four, Jalen Wilson has to be playing good. When that guy yeah. is not locked in and you can just kind of see him going through the motions, not super aggressive getting offensive rebounds, like when he's not being good Jalen Wilson, I think we're a lot worse. And I think Jalen yeah. has to be good in March for us to make it. Yeah, and hopefully eventually some jumpers start falling for him. But it's like – He's yeah. so good on the boards. And, th- like, if he's active and just super good on the glass, like, I feel great about Jalen. We don't need him to score 15, 20. Like, it's an extra bonus. But it's like you got a guy in CB who averaged 15 all year, yeah. a guy in Remy that's been coming off the bench this weekend at least, sc- scoring in double digits, and then Oach 20 a night. So it's like you don't need Jalen to go hit a bunch of threes and have 15 or 20 points. It's like as long as he's really good on the glass, yeah, that's huge for us. I – uh I loved last night. Like Jalen had, I think, 12 second half points. And like they weren't, it was just like scrappy buckets, like just offensive boards. He got a couple of loose balls that turned into layups. Like that's what he does for you. And those are the things that when you close, just grow. Like, you know, every time we've made a uh, Final Four run, you think back to NC State, yeah. you think back to uh, Davidson. You think, I mean, there's always just an ugly, disgusting brawl that you got to win to get there. And like Jalen Wilson's the guy that's going to help you win that game. Yeah. CB does well in those games too, I think. 2012 had a bunch of them, honestly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we didn't make a shot Purdue outside of four crazy. feet against NC State or something like that. Like it was just gross. Uh, do we have questions, Tucker? All right. Question for you guys What upsets do you see happening around one? My first one, we've, we've, laughed at providence all year but san diego or south dakota state 30 and 4 mm-hmm. 13 seed it may not even be an upset because they might be favored in that game yeah, but I, I like them to be providence providence probably be favored by a point or two but i mean in a four versus 13 that's kind of like hilarious to look at that was the first one that stuck out to me yeah uh, just kind of looking at it i mean st mary's is a five i know they beat gonzaga but if they get a team like indiana Coming off a win on, I don't know if it's Tuesday or Wednesday, but in the first four, um, you know, a big school maybe knocking off a five. But so those what, happen all the time. St. Mary's is against Indiana? Wyoming or Indiana, whoever wins that. Oh, okay. They okay. get a first four. And then, um, I mean, we said it, or I mentioned it earlier, fade Iowa coming, or fade those teams that are hot in conference kind of randomly. <laughs> don't make me pick the Spiders. Don't make I, me pick the Spiders. Dude, Jacob love, Gilliard, baby. Don't He's make me pick Kansas the City spiders. Kid, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean. I told you that it was going to be KU Richmond Sweet 16 Wait, who's an Richmond hour got? before this election show. Who's Iowa. Your, okay. I could see I could see UAB uh, beating Houston. I know I'm high on Houston, so that. Um, but Houston's a little banged up right now. They had two guys sit today, and then one of their bigs was like a game-time decision. So they're a little banged up, and obviously 12s beat fives all the time. So. I'll, uh, I got one for you guys, too. I think this will be pretty trendy. Virginia Tech over Texas. Okay. Virginia Tech just smoked Duke. They smoked really everyone in yeah. the ACC tournament. Texas, they don't look good. Uh, now, I would hammer Vautech. Chris Beard, he's he, he's good in March. Like, you can't doubt that. He's been good. But 
Yeah. They're not playing good ball, and no. Virginia Tech's playing really good ball. I'm pulling one up right now that I almost want to pull the trigger on, but before we move on from upsets, I want to get to this one. So if you guys have any others you have, uh, fire away because my uh, website's taking seven years. Now, <laughs> those are my main Wait, ones. you need a bracket? No, I have the bracket, but I'm tempted to take Yale over Purdue. <laughs> like, I don't hate that because Purdue can't guard me. I anybody. mean, me, you, and Beecher so run like, out and go three versus five in Purdue and Purdue. That, that's up 65 my thing. Points. It's like they just – just seem fraudulent. Like their offense is sick. Don't get me wrong, but sneaky one. I'm going to throw out. I think everyone's really high on Arkansas, and I really like Arkansas. But Vermont looked really good the other day, and Arkansas has lost to some bad teams. If you look back to what they did early in the year, they could. I don't know. Like if you're picking a 13-4, other than I think everyone's going to pick South Dakota State, which is why I kind of hate that. But Providence just. I mean, they're not that. That good. that question is definitely just an AB question because he just loves the. <laughs> Feed me the upsets, yeah. baby. All right, what else we got, Tucker? Which one seed is likely to lose first? Don't make me say the Zags. Don't make me do it. You like Memphis in I that like game? Memphis. They're give hot. me, give me Corpus Christi over the Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would Hammer. say, I would absolutely say Baylor. I think I, they're gonna have a tough matchup second round, no matter what, what with U N C UNC Marquette. Yeah. So You've been high, I think you're pretty high on U N C. I I go back and forth. You saw UNC at their best, but you also see UNC the way they looked against Virginia. Or yeah, they lost Virginia Tech, right? I feel so, like Baylor. Yeah. I guess we've talked about this for a few weeks now, but I, it's tough with Baylor too because Cryer. I don't even know the update on him. He hasn't played in a while. He's and, not playing. Yeah, yeah. So he was our leading scorer before he went out. But people forget Norfolk State has beat a uh, Big Twelve team. In the uh, first round, mm-hmm. Tucker. Shout out to our Tucker. He's a Missouri fan, but uh, Norfolk State. Watch out for that, Baylor. He's going to sabotage this episode. I just know it. <laughs> I got Baylor. Connection cut. I got Baylor losing in the second round to the North Carolina Tar Heels. Okay, love that. Now here's one that's tough for me because I think both. I think all four one seeds are probably. If I were filling on a bracket, I've Every got them year, all. One loses. I know, but I've got them Every all getting year. out of the in second the round. Yeah. But. I hate this because I've mocked you UCLA all year because it drove me <laughs> because of preseason nuts rankings. that they were preseason number two. And I was like, Kansas is so much better than UCLA. They're going to be a four seed. I nailed it. I feel like a genius. <laughs> They're a four. But if UCLA and Baylor play in the Sweet 16, UCLA is winning that game. So I've got the Bruins to the Elite Eight. <laughs> and I've got Baylor gone. Say that one more 16. time. The Bruins. The Bruins, which I hate because I've been the biggest UCLA hater all year. But that – they've. They looked solid against Arizona last night. Um, According to one Kenny Palm, that's the only uh, – they're, like, they're one of like four teams that can win it. You this guy says uh, Gonzaga is going to lose to Memphis, which I, I don't mind that. Dude, I like I just, that. Not happening. I, when, Bob. When is the last time Gonzaga got – like had a big upset? Now, obviously, Fuse had his issues, but have they really ever – have they lost – I guess Wichita State beat them in a 9-1 game. Did they year. lose – wasn't Syracuse an 11 against them? Or am I thinking of Virginia? That was Virginia, okay. Syracuse. Virginia blew like a double-digit second like half lead. A, a 10 or 11 in the Elite Eight one year. I could be wrong on that, but it's kind of cool think... that people are asking questions today, at least. <laughs> <laughs> we got anything else? You go Creighton guy. Shout out to uh, pig number one. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we've got a couple first. Yeah. Who do you guys have coming out of the East? That region is tough. I think it's Kentucky. It's, I, mean, I, it's, I can't it's the pick trendy other pig. Team. I know, and everyone's going to have it, but. I mean, who else do you guys think? We both, we just said we're not high on Baylor. I think UCLA, I could see, Purdue, I could see Purdue, Kentucky being a fun matchup because Purdue not actually has this. Yale. Dude, <laughs> and Kentucky always gets this, it feels like. Remember when they got Wichita State undefeated? Kentucky got dropped to an eight. They should have been a five seed <laughs> that year. They made the but they wanted four. it, Wichita State, Kentucky in that second round. They got Wofford a few years ago with Storm Murphy, who's now leading Virginia Tech. Kentucky is Murray State in the second round. And we were we showed Murray State as a team we were terrified of, right? I mean, that team has lost what two game, three, four games? I don't know. Like they have an absurd record. If I'm Kentucky, I hate that matchup. Purdue, Kentucky would be a really good Sweet yeah. Sixteen t- game. But Yale, Kentucky. Like I said, I think UCLA, UCLA, Kentucky, and that Elite Eight is what how I would have it. And the, I just think Kentucky wins that game. But, I wonder how many percentage of brackets will have Kentucky. So many. It's going to the final four. Fifty percent, probably right. Yeah, but I I do like the Purdue Kentucky matchup though because Purdue has bigs like with Edie and Williams and Jay Nivey is obviously, I mean he's electric, one of the best guards in the country. So 
I think that would be a super fun matchup. Yeah, I mean, Purdue's terrifying because of how, I mean, they got the best offense in the country. If they turn it on. Are we out on Baylor? I'm pretty out on Baylor. Let's. Hmm. But <laughs> if you. <laughs> they lose to OU and they're just all of a sudden a seven seed quality. No, they're fine. <sighs> I mean, but, they, I mean, you if you go off Ken Palm, yeah, Baylor's really good. Baylor's pr- one of your three picks to win the Natty. But. Like, yeah. I just I don't like teams hobbling in unhealthy in March. But they haven't We've been seen... healthy. Yeah, like they're they haven't. Like they beat us. They kind of. I mean, they didn't smoke us, but they pulled away late against us. And I mean, they have the same roster then that they do now. Yeah, I know they lost JTT, which I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce his name. Chamu Chachua. There you go. Uh, thank you, friend. <laughs> he and, loves uh, it. <laughs> Mika, remember, remember how he would say Sfi's name. I remember Mikhail that. Luke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and just prided himself that he could pronounce pronounce it right. Oh yeah, just loves foreign hoopers. Um, all right, God, yeah, that is so sexy. The eat what? Just that potential, like if the higher seeds win all the game, KU's run. Yeah, I mean, goodness, I have Dude, a really you, bad feeling. I hate how happy we are. Like, I know. I hate... That's why I don't like. I'm pretty happy, but you guys are ecstatic, and that just makes me nervous for March because it's like we've had roads where it's just paved. But and that's the thing, like, okay, so we say, yeah, we want to see Auburn. Auburn hasn't been good, but we forget that we won't see Auburn for two more weeks. And if Auburn could string together three wins here, including a win over Wisconsin, or actually, I don't know if Wisconsin's making see, that Sweet Sixteen game. You guys but like trying to talk ourselves out of this being an easy bracket, and every time you try to, you start laughing. Well, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't ask for a better region. I already said that. Like, I mean, you're talking to guys that have seen us lose to Northern Iowa, which was not a good matchup, but like. This is a team, 2011, this is a program that had a run of Richmond, 12 seed in the Sweet 16, which AB thinks happened again, and 11 seed VCU in the Elite Eight. So easy regions are out the window for me. Like, obviously, I want it on paper to look as easy as it possibly can, but no matter who we get in the Elite Eight, it's going to be a brawl, and we're going to be like, Maybe can we, underdogs. Can we pull up the video that we tweeted of Ryan like <laughs> creaming himself when the bracket got released? Because it's, Stop it. <laughs> no, I'm just He's saying. Switch his mind. <laughs> if 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 you're trying to like, I don't want us to completely overreact about getting Auburn. There are some things that are terrifying about Auburn too. They have a top three pick in the draft. They have one of the best defensive centers in the country. He's like eight foot tall. Yeah. And so it's like, I don't know if I'm trying to play devil's advocate and say, maybe this isn't the best case scenario. It's better than Kentucky. I think that's why we're so excited is it's better than Kentucky. I don't know. Who would you rather have Duke or Auburn? Auburn probably. Yeah. I don't think Duke is good, but I think there's a little coach K voodoo that he's going to go on a run. Um, and I mean, there's no re- there's no reason not to be excited, anyways. Just about this team and how they're peaking. Like, look at that. I mean, that's blue blood central that Baylor has to go through, and we're over here freaking out about Providence. <laughs> oh yeah, Baylor. I'm not. Baylor's got a tough bracket. I, mean, I just like I feel good about our team regardless right now. Yeah. You know, like we just beat two teams that were tough on us all year. Like at Tech, they whooped our ass, and then we almost lost. We would have lost to them at Allen if Oach didn't hit that three to send it to OT, and then TCU, we almost lost to them twice in the same week. Yep. It's like you beat two really tough teams that are defensively sound and in two in a span of two days too. It's like I feel super good about our team right now, no matter what. Like, okay. Jay, we've always, we talked about the trio of CB, Oates, Jalen all year, and Dave was really good yesterday, by the way, too. Finally, and then Remy yeah. and Mitch off the bench. Like that feels like our seven right now of our rotation that Bill kind of has it down to seven. Yeah, he'll mix in some minutes for Joe and Jay Cole, but other than that, I feel good about those seven right now. Okay, so we're going to start trying to wrap this up, but I want to first, before we make our final four predictions, first B-turn, I want to hear immediately. not everyone's region. I just want you to hear, if you're picking the Sweet 16 of KU's region, (laughs) give it to me, and if you want AB to go first, he can. AB, give me your Sweet 16 KU's region. Uh, I'll go with, uh, uh, geez, that bottom half is bad. (laughs) Mm, USC's not doing it again. I guess I'll take Wisconsin. Um, and then uh, they're going to play USC. Okay. And then I'm going to take You the, guys are so out on Auburn. The Jackrabbits <laughs> versus the Hawks. And uh, the KU's going to go in with a, a 1, a 13, a 3, and a 7 seed. Wow. All right, B-turn. We've seen crazier. Let's go... The top will be chalky. I'll go. I'll just go KU Iowa. I feel good about that. That'd be such a fun matchup in Chicago. And then I'll go. 
I'm going to go LSU and uh, just give me Auburn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Auburn, LSU, Iowa, KU. I, uh, wow. I'm going without yeah. Will Wade. I really like wow. KU. I really like KU and, uh, Iowa, obviously. I'm having a really hard time. Who is the uh, seven seed in Auburn? Who would they play? USC. Okay. Who's the 10? Miami, Florida. Okay. There's Chuck my, there's Moore. my Chuck, pick. Baby. I knew I liked the team. Give me Miami, Sweet 16, <coughs> Wisconsin versus Miami, and then Elite Eight. I don't know if I'll have Miami going all the way to Elite Eight, but I'll go KU, Iowa, Wisconsin, Miami, and we'll see what happens. How but, about a baby face Elite Eight with Chuck yeah. Moore versus DeJuan Harris? The I'll, Chuck Moore revenge tour in the Elite Chuck's Eight. Chuck's from Shy, Self. isn't he? Yeah, he is. That would be, be fun, fun when he scores 60 in front of his home crowd to ruin our night. 12 um, for 13 from three. Yeah. All right. So I don't want to hear your regions for everyone else, but let's do official final four predictions. Oh, boy. B turn. You yeah, always take I too gotta, long. <laughs> I got to fill up the bracket. You go first. All right. Uh, give me. Let me start where I should start, huh? Yeah. Uh, start in the West. Let's go with uh, Gonzaga. <laughs> I don't really mean it about Memphis. I think they'll roll. <laughs> Why am I terrified that all three of us are going to take KU? Because we are. I am. <laughs> Go ahead. Kentucky. Uh, I just when I, Every time I look through this, I don't see another team that I feel comfortable putting in the Final Four. And I know everyone's going to take it. And it's a little popular. Sorry for not giving a take. Um, but Kentucky, probably the, the Final Four out of there. Then give me, geez, Villanova and the South. And, uh, yeah, I got to ride the Hawks. I yep. can't be this happy about bracket and not take the Hawks. You want me to go B turn? All right, I'll go Zags. I said it. They'll sleepwalk to the Final Four. <laughs> uh, I'll go Tennessee. They're playing really good. They just won the SEC tournament. I like them to beat Arizona in the Elite Eight. Midwest, love the Hawks. I just said that. And then East, God, man. I know. I, I want to take UCLA over Kentucky in the Elite Eight so bad, but I'm going Kentucky. They haven't been to a Final Four since 2015. They're good. If Calipari can't get this team to a final four, he hadn't been there in a while. Fire him. Yeah, I'm gonna Just go. Kidding. I'm gonna go Zags, Kentucky, Illinois, and KU. I love that. That's a good. That's a. The South is very. East fun. is the, tough because South is fun. I could talk myself into Purdue. Yeah, their uh, defense is so bad. It just that scares me with them. They, yeah. I, I really think they are a team that can lose first round or go to the final four. Yeah, Purdue's running under the radar. So UCLA too. It's like they have a. They have a lot of guys back. They basically have everyone back from last year. Yeah, they're Team good, that and that's the thing. It's very close to playing the Natty. Yeah, half quarter away from getting there. So, all right, let's wrap up. We'll obviously, I think we'll bring you another show before Thursday as long as Tucker's willing to put up with us before that. But in uh, that way, we'll have some time to kind of actually digest what we've seen here. We were spewing takes. Do we have any other questions, Tucker? Nova, two seed, we shocked. Oh, Drew Erickson, San Francisco Dons. Name's Madness 2020. <laughs> Shouts Don. Love you, babe. All right. Well, let's wrap up. We'll be back this week before the first round game on Thursday. And uh, I have one more upset before we go. <laughs> I have one more upset. Okay. We didn't get to it. Houston, we've talked about them frauds. They've beaten one NCAA tournament team this year. That was Memphis, and it was today. They're going to lose to the University of Anthony Bax first round. UAB. UAB. I do love Blazers. Jelly, Jelly Walker Jelly, from UAB. Jelly Walker. Um, all right. We'll be back on sometime this week. Shout out to Kingdom Bar here in Overland Park. Please come check them out. Uh, it's a great place. It's been a great place to watch this here. So uh, if you want to watch an NCAA tournament game, come join them here. But that's all we got. Thank you for everyone that tuned in live. This will be out in normal fashion here if you didn't catch the early earlier part. But, yeah, looking forward to March, boys. Rock Chuck. This is March. <laughs> <laughs>